After almost 10 years in charge of Liverpool, Jurgen Klopp is stepping down as their manager at the end of this season, and that is honestly a massive blow to the club. Klopp has transformed Liverpool into one of the best teams in the world, winning them their sixth Champions League trophy and also their first league title in 30 years. But with Jurgen Klopp saying goodbye to the club, it's time to say hello to their new manager. That's right, guys. For the next 10 seasons, I'm becoming the new gaffer at Liverpool. I'm going to win them as many trophies as I possibly can in ultimately make them Europe's most dominant club once again. But the wheel is going to be here as well to either make my life a little bit easier or a thousand times more difficult. So here is the starting 11 I've loaded into a Liverpool. And let's just call a spade a spade, guys. This team is world class. I mean, you've got Alisson, you've got Virgil van Dijk, you've got Mohamed Salah, you've got Trent Alexander-Arnold. You've literally got quality all around the pitch, guys. This team is ridiculous. But as you can see, it's a pretty old team with majority of our highest rated plays being in their early 30s, so at some point we are definitely going to have to address that issue. But on the flip side, there's a lot of youngsters we could potentially build this team around in the future, like Stefan Bajcetic, like Kaide Gordon, and maybe even Ben Doak. And to top it off, guys, we've got a stellar starting budget, 156 million to spend. Yeah, we're going to have a good time with Liverpool in this takeover. And as you can see from the leaderboard, Inter Milan are the top dogs right now. 27 trophies is what we've got to try to beat with Liverpool, but you know what? I actually reckon this team is capable of doing that, but there's only one way to find out. Let's kick in. Now, I'm going to meddle with things a little bit by switching the formation to the 4-3-3 attacking variation. We've got a very good central attacking midfielder, a front three of absolute dreams minus the striker, and a couple of decent centre midfielders, so this one is literally perfect for Liverpool. And we are going to be rocking the gig and pressing tactical vision. To be quite frank, guys, I couldn't imagine Liverpool not using this. And after proper meddling with the team, this is the strongest start in 11. I feel like we can field in season one without making any signings yet, but there's a couple of other things I'm doing behind the scenes. Firstly, I'm converting Jota to become a striker. It'll only take a fortnight for this to happen, and I feel like once he actually converts to a striker, he'll go up and overall. And I'm converting Cody Gappo to become a right winger. It'll once again only take a couple of weeks, and I think on the wing, he'll absolutely boss it. But one thing I'm not going to do is convert Trent Alexander-Arnold to become a centre midfielder. I personally would because I feel like his stats suit that role but I feel like Liverpool fans would absolutely hunt me down if I did this and I've also put all these guys up for a loan move because quite frankly speaking these guys are the future of Liverpool but right now they just don't fit into the team and we've already established we've got a lot of money to work with in season one but until we've spun that wheel that doesn't mean anything so let's go to the wheel and see what it's going to store for us in season one but before we spin the wheel have you guys seen Joe Gomez's FC24 picture Jesus they've done him right dear to there. He's definitely seen better days, hasn't he? But guys, I think I've got the solution for Gomez. Have you lot ever heard of Manscaped? Well, this video is brought to you by Manscaped.com, the global men's lifestyle brand that is changing the game when it comes to men's grooming. Now, be honest with yourselves, guys. How many times have you been down there to make your nether regions look a little bit better for your lady, only to find yourself in a pretty painful situation? Tell me about it. Yeah, that's right. We've all been there. I'm 28 and I'm still terrified of that happening again. But gents, I finally have a solution to this problem, the Performance Package 5.0 Ultra. Now let's first off talk about the main event of this package, the Lawn Mower 5.0 itself. It features next-gen dual skin safe blade heads now accompanied by an upgraded trimmer blade and an interchangeable foil blade for enhanced performance. This has longer, wider and sharper teeth which makes cutting through hair ridiculously easy. Kind of like how any team cuts through Chelsea's defence right now. Yeah, kind of like that. My favourite part though, it's got LED lights which has a dual temperature feature. It just helps that you can now see down there when you're trying to get through those tougher areas. Then there's the Weed Whacker 2.0, the nose and ears trim it and with this thing let me tell you it takes you 90 seconds to clean nose and your ears and just like the lawnmower 5.0 the weed whacker is also waterproof so cleaning it is dead simple this package also includes the crop reserver and the crop smoother so once you're done making your balls look good you can make them smell as good as well but wait we're not done yet they've also thrown in a pair of boxes and let me tell you something these are pretty damn comfy and they've thrown in the shed 2.0 and if you're like me and quite forgetful it's best to store all of your things in the same place and that's that's exactly what I'm going to do with it. Now it's true, Valentine's Day is being and gone, but that's no reason to slack off your personal hygiene. Your woman deserves better and so do your balls. Go to manscaped.com right now and use promo code GOODWIN for 20% off, free international shipping and two free gifts. 
<laughs> That's sick. I've actually got a promo code. Remember, guys, 20% off free international shipping and two free gifts with your order when you use promo code GOODWIN at checkout. Link will be in the description and it will be the pinned comment in this video. Trust me, fellas, not only will you meet in two veg, thank you for this, but so will that woman in your life. Now, let's get back into the video. All right, then, Wheel. What have you got in store for me in season? What? Oh, my God. What the hell is this? Red. Financial problems. The owners are broke. They're halving your current budget from now until the... Oh, my God. So, we've basically got half of the budget from season one all the way until the end of this takeover. We couldn't have landed on anything worse in season one. So, we've gone from 158 million in the budget to 79 million. It's still a half decent amount of money, but it's definitely not ideal for the rest of this bloody takeover, is it? Now, looking at the team, I feel like the only place we're lacking is in the midfield where Graven Birch plays. I mean, he's 79 overall and he's only 21 granted. He's got a lot of time to improve, but if we're serious about catching into Milan, we definitely need to bolster our midfield. And that's exactly what I'm going to try to do with this player. Serge Milinkovic Savage from Al Halal is 28, 86 overall. I know he's going to be on the expensive side, but I do have a little bit of a plan for this. I'm offering 35 million alongside Thiago and a swap deal. Thiago is getting on a bit now. He's not really the player used to be and he's very injury prone I feel like this is definitely the right move for Liverpool and they have actually rejected that offer I what we've offered you quite a lot of money there why the hell haven't you accepted it okay let's try this again 50 million alongside Thiago come on you yeah, better walk out on this one they want 62.9 million oh my god even with Thiago you rob dogging gits I've just offered them 55 million alongside Thiago hopefully they go for this and they do get in and there he is the six foot four giant of a centre midfielder is officially a Liverpool player. And the good news keeps coming. Gakpo's training to become a winger has completed his turning into an 83 rated winger. I was pretty damn sure he was going to improve in overall but oh wow. But I'm almost certain Jota goes up in overall. Oh, what? Okay. I was both wrong both times. What? I don't even know what I'm saying here. I'm actually gobsmacked at that. But regardless of that, this is now our strongest starting 11 going into season one. And I feel like it's going to be very interesting to see if we can actually keep up with Inter Milan. Remember, we've got 27 trophies to beat. And this is a pretty damn good start. We've won the league title with 95 points. We were five points off making Liverpool Centurions, man. That is a crazy start. And we've also gone on to win the FA Cup as well. I'm telling you now, guys, this takeover is going to be bloody interesting. But we only made it to round three of the Carabao Cup. City did end up knocking us out on penalties. Honestly, I feel like if we did draw up against anybody else, we'd have won this competition as well. But we did only make it to the round of 16 in the Europa League. Marseille actually battered us 4-2 on aggregate. Jesus. And as you can imagine from the season, we've had the stats are pretty decent. Salah, Luis Diaz, Jota, Milinkovic Savic, Sabozlai, McAllister, Trent Alexander-Arnold, all putting a right shift in. And just look at the team, guys. Our weakest player in the team is Alexis McAllister, and he's 84 rated for goodness sake. It's not exactly a burden on the starting 11, is it? It's only been season one, and we've got two trophies already. We're a long way away from Inter Milan, but if that wheel is pretty kind to us next year, I reckon we may stand a chance of beating them. But before we find out what the wheel gives us for season two, if you're enjoying the video so far, leave it a big old thumbs up and smash that subscribe button. Right, wheel, we've got more good on you than bad, so shut, there's no way. There is no way I am that unlucky. Injury prone. Three of your starting 11 players are injured. Spin the wheel to find out who they are and make no signings to reply. Oh my god, I actually hate this wheel. I actually hate this wheel with a passion, man. Right then, who's the first person injured in our... Oh my god, Allison. That is just not a good start. He's one of the best keepers in the game. So Allison's gone. Who's the second injured player? Mohamed Salah. Oh my god. So two of our best players. Amazing. What's the third one? Be Virgil van Dijk. I swear to god, I am better at just jinx myself, man. Kanate. You know what? It's basically as good as Virgil van Dijk, isn't he? He's bloody brilliant too. So there you go, guys. As you can see, Mo Salah, Ibrahim Akinate and Alisson are injured for this season, man. That is not good news at all. Especially for Mohamed Salah, who's 32 years old now and an injury at this time in his career may be detrimental to how long he actually plays for now. I'm not too fussed about Kanate because he's in his mid-20s and Alisson for a goalkeeper is still pretty young, but Salah is definitely going to take a hit from this injury. And even though we've had to chop our budget in off because the wheel told us to last year, we still can't make any signings because that's what the wheels told us to do this year so that 94 million may as well be zero but all things considered this team looks stellar going into season two i am so happy i decided to convert gapo to a right winger i knew it was
was a good call and I was absolutely spot on. The only thing that's going to let us down this year is our second choice goalkeeper. I mean, he's only 76 overall. It's a far cry away from having a 91 rated keeper, isn't it? But there's nothing else we can do now apart from wait and see how we do this year. And let me tell you, it's a stinky situation. We are eighth in the Premier League, five points outside the top six. Allison being injured really was the biggest hit, wasn't he? We really did miss him. And the best part, City won the league this year with 15 less points than it took to win it last year. That's how non-competitive this Premier League been this time. They also ended up slapping us in the Community Shield. And we also got knocked out by QPR in the FA Cup quarterfinals, man. This season's just stinky. And Hull City knocked us out of the semis of the Carabao Cup. I am actually done with season two. I'm not being funny though. How the hell does Hull City win the Carabao Cup? Aren't they a championship team right now? Yeah, they're literally a championship team. They didn't even make the playoffs and they have won the Carabao Cup. This is just boring. Me, it? And to top it off, we got sent to the Europa League in the Champions League after not even coming close to making it out of the group stage. And Villa ended up knocking us out of that anyway. Oh, do you know what? I'm done with season two. We need to put it in the rear view mirror and move on. But when you look at the stats, it's so well-rounded. A solid seven or eight players have got at least 15 goal contributions. The good news is though, in three weeks time, Alisson, Mohamed Salah and Kanate are coming back to the team and thank God for that because we need them back. But I did say Salah was going to take the biggest hit. He's gone to 87 overall. And I feel like once season three comes around and eating is 33, we're not going to have much time left. So we've got to make the most of it. So it's now our third year of this takeover. And as you can see, the team is back to normal. However, Salah, Kanate and Alisson have all taken a little bit of hit when it comes to their rating. And we've got a tidy budget, to be fair. 82 million to spend in season three. And that's after the budget's been chopped it off. Now, before we actually get to spinning the wheel this time, I kind of want to share my plan for what I want to do this this year. Now, firstly, I want a better second choice keeper than this geezer. He was absolutely awful last year. If anything happens to Allison, whether he gets suspended, injured, or the wheel has his way with him again, we've got to be prepared. And I want a better second choice fullback in place of Simicas as well. He's 29 now, 78 overall. He's not getting any younger and he's not getting any better either. Now, yes, we have got Connor Bradley, who in real life is killing it. He's only 22, 76 overall, but the likelihood is I'm going to loan him out once again for a couple of years if I can because he's just wasted sitting on the subs bench. And we've got more than enough money to do all of that. The question is this time, is that we're finally going to give us something good? I mean, surely it has to, right? We've had two bad ones. Oh my God, we just about miss another bad one. Major improvement. Your coaching department has improved your worst player. Give him a plus 10 in overall. That's brilliant. So it looks like our third choice keeper, Vitislav Jaros, who's 23, 63 rated, is going to get bumped up to 73 overall. But the wheel said nothing about not spending money on players, which means we've got 82 million to spend in season three. And you guys already know what I want to do. Now, the backup keeper I'm going for is Georgi Mamadishvili from Valencia. He's only 24, 84 overall as well. Once Ellison eventually retires, you better believe he's taking a start in 11 spot. And I'm going for David Round from Brentford for that backup fullback role. He's only 27, 81 overall, definitely better than Simica, so he's definitely coming into this team. And for the total amount of 68 million flat, we've signed both David Raum and also Georgie Mamadish Philly on four-year deals. And as you guys know, this team is back to its full strength. The subs bench is riddled with quality as well, so hopefully we can bounce back in style in Season 3. And that's exactly what we've done. We've won the Premier League title for the second time in three seasons. I feel like we are well and truly back. Okay, maybe not. Southampton knocked us out in round three of the FA Cup. That is definitely not a good sign of us being back. But we have won our second trophy, winning the Carabao Cup. So out of the three trophies we could have won this year, we did end up with two. That's not bad, you know. And the stats look way better this year. McAllister being our best player stats wide. 23 goals, 13 assists and 44 games for a centre midfielder, guys. That's ridiculous. By the way, let me know in the comments who you think the top goal scorer and assist is going to be. I reckon Diaz is going to be our top goal scorer, whilst Trent Alexander Arnold's going to be our top assist. But I can already see season four giving us a lot of issues. Just take a look at how old this team has become, man. A lot of our best players are in their early to mid 30s, and this is something we're definitely going to have to sort out at some point. Don't get me wrong, the team does look absolutely insane heading into season four, but with that looming over our heads and us having.
having to spin that wheel before we do anything in season four. Guys, I'm not liking how it looks right now. Okay, what's the wheel got in store for us in season four? This looks pretty damn decent. Only somewhat, that's fantastic. That's actually brilliant. The best one so far. So that means we've got 129 million to bring in only Wonder Kids. I mean, we couldn't have asked for a better option on the wheel to land on, could we? Especially when we've just gone over the fact that we've got a very aging team. It's time to bring some youth into the squad. And I'm going to do this by offering Virgil van Dijk alongside 16 million for Antonio Silva. He's only 22 in 84 rated. I feel like this is the absolute right move for Liverpool. They only want 19.4 mil and the 10% salary clause. Absolutely sound. I'm not planning on selling Antonio Silva anytime soon. And there he is, guys, in that Liverpool shit. It quite literally is out with the old and Virgil van Dijk and in with the new with Antonio Silva. Now we just need to sort out the Mohamed Salah situation and I know exactly who to go for for this. Johan Bakayoko is who I'm talking about. He's only 23, 84 rated already. And just look at those stats, man. He's going to turn into an absolute monster by the end of this takeover. And there we go, guys. For £60 million, just like that, he now plays for us. And yes, that does leave us with £51 million, But honestly, I feel like for now, at least, the team is absolutely sound to go into Season 4. I mean, look at it now. Antonio Silva's in Virgil van Dijk's spot. We've got Gakpo playing on the right. And Bakayoko to go into Gakpo's spot when Gakpo Gakpo gets too old. I'm telling you now, guys, we are going to rain trophies in left, right, and center this year, especially now that we're back in Europe. But maybe I got a little bit ahead of myself. We were fourth in the Premier League at the end of season four, but look at how close it was. 79 points for both City and Spurs, 78 for Arsenal, and 77 for ourselves. The problem is, though, guys, if we do want to beat Inter Milan's record of 27 trophies, we've got to be winning the Premier League pretty much every single season from now on. But we have won the Community Shield, so that is one trophy. But we lost the FA Cup final to United, man. That is a massive val. That could have been the second trophy. And we've once again made it to the semis of the Carabao Cup. I am so sick of falling short in this competition. And this time we made the quarters of the Champions League, man. We simply cannot win a European competition, can we? Well, just look at Luis Diaz's stats, guys. 33 goals, 11 assists in 58 games. I'm telling you now, he's going to be our top goal scorer by the end of this takeover. But looking at the leaderboard, guys, it's not looking too good. Four seasons in, only five trophies won. If we even want to stand a chance of catching up with Inter Milan, we've got to win the treble every single season from here on out. So here we are, guys, in season five of this takeover. Oh my god, we've just landed on the best one. Max overall, make a player of your choice, 99 rated, with the leaderboards looking as bad as they are, this is exactly what we needed. Now we get to make one of these players 99 rated, and I feel like I already know who I'm going to give this to. Johan Bakayoko is the player I've got in mind. He's only only 24, meaning by the time we reach season 10, his overall won't be in any danger of dropping. He's already 87 overall. I'm telling you guys, this is the right move. And the wheel didn't say anything about transfer restrictions, so we've got 137 million to spend on basically whoever we want. Get in! Now I'm thinking it's finally time we improve our defence a little bit more by bringing a better centre-back in for Gomez. He's 85 overall, but he's 30 years old, so getting a younger and better centre-back is definitely the right move, I think. And I'm thinking Ronald Araujo is the perfect replacement. 91 overall, 28 years old. The only problem is he's very expensive. We're between 146 and 170 mil. So a player swap deal is definitely on the cards. Now I'm going to offer 100 mil alongside Joe Gomez. He's the player that we're going to replace anyway, so it doesn't make too much difference to me. And they've accepted that first time. Just like that, we've signed Ronald Araujo to Liverpool. And there he is in the Liverpool shirt. He cost us quite a bit of money, but I absolutely believe he'll be worth every penny. And don't think for a second I'd forgot about Bakayoko. He is officially 99 overall. The best player in the game right now. And just look at the state of this team heading into season five of this takeover. I'm telling you now, guys, if we don't win at least three or four trophies this year, I do not know what else to do. But it's a great start, guys. We are top of the league by 11 points. That's trophy number one of season five. May that trophy number two because we've won the FA Cup. May that trophy number three because we've won the Carabao Cup. May that trophy number four because we We've beaten AC Milan 2-1 in the Champions League final. It's Istanbul all over again. And let me tell you, I'm not surprised we've just got the quadruple. Look at the state of these stats, especially back of Yoko, man. 46 goals and 13 assists in 62 games. What did I tell you? Putting him 99 rated was absolutely the right call. Guys, this team is legitimately world-class. Not a single player under 90 rated in this entire team. My only hope is we can keep this off. So guys, I've just realized I made a massive blunder not long back when I was 
trying to sort the age situation out. Andrew Robertson is 34 years old and Milinkovic Savic is also 33 years old. Now I know that they are both very high rated players but realistically how long are they going to stay like that? Maybe one or two seasons maximum? We need to sort this out as soon as possible. And even with the budget chopped in half we still got 164 million to spend this year so providing that the wheel will actually let us do what we want we can easily sort this out. But unfortunately me and the wheel don't have a very good history when it comes to oh you are kidding me just what I didn't need. Transfer ban no signings this season unlucky Goodwin. Yeah thanks a lot wheel. So it looks like for one more year at least Andrew Robertson and Milinkovic Savage will be in the starting 11. I just hope that by the end of this season their overalls don't go down too much. But we can worry about that in a minute. We've once again won the Premier League. That's trophy number one of season six. But we once again showed the community shield against Manchester City. I am so sick of losing this competition to them. In the ball jobs knocked us out in round three of the FA Cup. Honestly, I'm not liking where this season is heading so far. And we also got knocked out in round three of the Carabao Cup by Arsenal on penalties. Honestly, the bottle jobs, Arsenal, Man City, screw the lot of you. We did win the UEFA Super Cup though, so that is at least trophy number two. As for the Champions League, we did make it through to the knockouts, but we didn't top the group with Benfica, Celtic and Real Sociedad in it. That just isn't a good sign straight off the bat, is it? But we do very easily get past Fenerbahce in the round of 16. And we just about get past Sevilla in the quarters. And we've just about beaten Leipzig in the semis and we're playing Monaco in the final. Oh, surely to God, this is the treble secured. There is no way in hell we have lost the final against Monaco. On penalties, it get Oh, Liverpool, man. Honestly, what are you playing at this year? How do we do this well stats-wise, but don't win more than two trophies? I'm still wrapping my head around the fact we lost the Champions League final against Monaco. But brushing that aside for a second, Mohamed Salah, a Liverpool legend, is leaving the club at the end of this season, but he's 76 rated, guys. He wouldn't renew his contract, so I'm just letting him leave. But coming back to the start in 11, I know Robertson and Milinkovic Savage are the weaknesses, but they're 86 rated and 88 rated. That's absolutely no excuse for the poor performance this year. And as you can see from the leaderboard right now, we've got a long way to go before we're catching up with Inter Milan or even Newcastle United for that matter. We've got a lot of work to do for the remainder of this takeover. Okay, new season, new spin of the wheel. What are we landing on this time? Expansion. Okay, this is a green one, so this is good. Only sign plays from outside the top five leagues. Okay, that's not bad. So we can't sign plays from the Prem, French League, Bundesliga, La Liga Santander, and the Serie A. Every other league is fair game. And it's safe to say our budget is pretty damn good this year. 271 million to be exact. And that's after chopping it in off. Could you imagine if we had 434 million? Now this is our golden opportunity to try and find replacements for Andrew Robertson and Milinkovic Savage. They're both still very highly rated, so it doesn't really matter too much if we can't find a replacement. But ideally, we do need to find better and younger players than them. Now my first thought was Gabri Viega for Milinkovic Savic's replacement but as you can see he's playing for Wolfsburg in the Bundesliga and because of that we can't actually sign him. And my next thought was what about Bajorn Maia from Club Bruce but he's playing for Brighton in the Premier League now so we can't exactly go for him either because he's in a top 5 league. Now ladies and gents we've got just under 300 million in our budget and I'm very tempted to not spend it because the player I found won't even fit into our subs bench. Raphael Onyedika is the highest rated player I could find outside of the top five leagues. He's 28, 81 overall. Honestly, guys, I don't think I'm going to spend the money on him. It's literally pointless. I mean, look at our bench for goodies here. We're going 85 rated Gravenberge, 85 rated Elliot. There's literally no room for on your dicker in this team. But the bad news about that is Milinkovic, Savage and Robertson, very old players, will remain in the starting 11 for at least one more year, man. That wheel has well and truly shafted us. I just hope it doesn't affect our performance too much this season. But this is not a good way to start things guys we are second in the prem in season seven why have we drawn 10 games from 38 man that's just a joke and why have we lost to bournemouth in the community shield final why can we not win this trophy it doesn't matter who we play against we simply can't win and leeds knocked us out in round five of the fa cup honest to god season seven is turning out to be the worst season so far in this takeover but we have got a consolation trophy by winning the carabao cup and we have won the champions league this time beating athletic bilbao to do it if only we could do this last
last year against Monaco. His stats wise, surprise, surprise, Bakayoko is our best player, 38 goals and 13 assists, but Luis Diaz is still banging him in for fun at 33, so look at him go. But guys, our aging situation is getting worse. Allison, Robertson, Milinkovic Savic, Diogo Jota, and Luis Diaz are all 33 years old or above. We need to try and somehow sort this out for the remaining three seasons. I mean, overall, guys, the team looks absolutely fantastic. The question is, how long is it going to last like that for whilst we've got this problem on our hands? But the bigger question is, in Season 8, is the wheel actually going to let us do something about this point deduction? This doesn't look good. You've broke the rules. 15 point deduction at the end of this season. What bloody rules have I broken? I mean, to my knowledge, last season, I didn't spend a damn penny on players. So what kind of rule are they talking about? The bloody UAP rule on the team. But with that point deduction, we could kiss goodbye to winning the Premier League title this year. But it didn't say anything about not making transfers. So what we can do is make sure this team is good enough to win every other competition. And I'm going to do this by bringing in Gabri Viega to replace Milan Givic Savic. He's 89 overall, 28 years old. Last year, we couldn't buy him because of what the wheel said. But this year, nothing's stopping me. You better believe I'm signing anymore. And just like that, for the total amount of £120 million, Gabri Viega now plays for Liverpool. Now, we do still have the Robertson problem to sort out. And we could use David Raul for the remainder of this takeover. But he's 32 years old as well. He's not exactly an ideal long-term replacement. But Connor Bradley certainly is. He's not even close to hitting 30 years old and he's 85 overall. I say we convert him to a left back and we bang him straight into the start in 11. And just to look at the team now heading into our 8th season of this takeover. Viegas in place of Milinkovic Savage. Bradley has taken Robertson's place. Honestly guys, somehow it's all come together quite nicely. Now obviously we still have the point deduction which obviously sucks because we're not winning the Premier League title this year but that doesn't mean we can't bang in trophies left, right and centre elsewhere this year. I'm just hoping that we can pull that off. But so far it doesn't look like we have because we made it to the round of 16 in the Champions League before Barca knocked us out. But we have won the FA Cup so that's trophy number one. Made that trophy number two because we've also won the Carabao Cup. And made that trophy number three because we've also won the Super Cup. Man, this is outrageous. But this part's heartbreaking, man. If we didn't have that point deduction, we'd have won the league by a country bloody mile. Instead, the bottle jobs win the league. How about bloody that? Just look at the stats as well, man. That is absolutely ridiculous, especially from 34-year-old Luis Diaz as well. 25 goals and 15 assists, man. He is ridiculous on this game. But ladies and gents, we are letting another Liverpool legend go. Alisson is leaving at the start of next season. He's 38 years old now. He's only 77 rated. I feel like his time is up at the club. But I've got to admit, going into the final two seasons, we've actually got a very stellar team. I don't know why Jota's in the start in 11. Nunes is actually overtaking him in overall, so he's now going to be our main striker. But I as you can see from the leaderboard, we unfortunately don't stand a chance of catching into Milan now, but we can catch AC Milan if we have a very good last two seasons of this takeover. We're heading into season nine. and there's one good on this wheel and one really bad. We've got the really bad one. What's this one then? Decrease three of your first team players' overalls by 15, spin the wheel to choose and make no signings. That is just... What can I say to that? This wheel has actually got it in for me, hasn't it? So who's the first player up on the chopping board? block. So Bozlai, oh my god, he's been so underrated in this takeover, man. Consistently being one of the best players every season, but now, probably not from now on. So Dominic Sabozlai is up first. Who is up second? Who's that? Connor Bradley. Oh, come on, man. That's so unfair on him. He's just got into the starting 11. One more spin to go. Who is the third unlucky? So, oh my god, that is unlucky. Nunes has just got back into the starting 11, and now his overall is getting to Increased by 50. That is genuinely shocking luck. And the best part, we can't even make any signings. I mean, we couldn't really do much with 79 million, but at least we'd have been able to do something. But the deed is done, guys. Dominic Sobosla, Darwin Nunes, and Connor Bradley's overalls have all been decreased by 15. And I am so gutted for Connor Bradley, man. He just made his way into the starting 11. The good news is, though, we do have decent replacements. I mean, Harvey Elliott can go into the cam roll, Jota can return into the starting 11, and David Round can take Connor Bradley's place. So it's 
not actually that bad. The big question is though, are the replacements good enough to win us at least three or four trophies this season? Well, we're off to an amazing start. We have won the Premier League with 98 points. Not only were we almost centurions, take a closer look at the table. We are undefeated in this entire season. We are joining Arsenal in that Invincibles club. And I'll be real, I'm genuinely proud of that, guys. Invincible in FC24. That's genuinely so rare to do. And we've also won the Community Shield, battering the bottle jobs to do it. But we lost the FA Cup final against Everton. Liverpool fans, if you're watching this, do not hunt me down for what's just happened. As for the Carabao Cup, we got knocked out in the quarters by Manchester City on penalties. They absolutely love knocking us out, don't they? But we've won the treble as we've once again won the Champions League, beating Barcelona to do it. How did we beat Barca to win the Champions League but couldn't beat Everton to win the FA Cup? But look at these stats, man. At 35 years old, Luis Diaz is actually grown in overall. What the hell is going on with this guy? He's not even human. But we have now only got one more year left in charge of this Liverpool team. And for the most part, I think we've done pretty damn well so far. And I'm really hoping that we can end this takeover on a high in season 10. But first things first, we got one more spin of this wheel. There's only one more thing on it. Plus three, what is this? Increase three of your players' ratings by three, but only make one sign. You know what? That's actually pretty damn decent to end on. But here's the pickle, guys. Which three players overall should I improve by three? Remember, we are trying to win as many trophies as humanly possible in our final season, so I've got to make sure I'm making the right decisions. I feel like Mamorja's Philly is definitely a safe route to go down. I mean, could you imagine a 98-rated goalkeeper in between the six? That would be unstoppable. I'm also thinking Diogo Jota would be a great player. I mean, granted, he is 35 years old, but he's still banging goals in left, right, and centre, and if we boost him up a little bit, maybe he's got one more really good year left, in he? And finally, I'm improving Harvey Elliott's overall by three as well. I mean, he did pretty well last year, and he's not even 30 years old. He's got five-star skills, five-star weak foot. Yeah, let's get him to 90 overall. Now, that leaves us with 136 million to spend on one player, and I feel like I know exactly which position I'm going for, and I know exactly who I'm bringing in. I'm going for Alejandro Balde from Arsenal. He's 28 years old, 89 overall. We have had a consistent left-back problem for absolutely years now, and we are finally, once and for all, sorting it out with the signing of Balde. And just like that, guys, for 110 million on the dot, Alejandro Balde is our final transfer of this takeover. And I've just realised something. We haven't got a second goalkeeper because Alisson retired. We've been the last couple of seasons without a second choice goalkeeper. Am I an absolute moron or am I a moron? Now, as you can see from the leaderboard, we are two trophies ahead of Bayer Leverkusen, but we are three behind AC Milan. So that is the target. Three or four trophies to either match or surpass AC Milan. And after bringing Alejandro Balde into the team as well as improving my modest Vili, Harvey Elliott and Diego shot his overalls by three, I absolutely believe like we are fully capable of doing that. And so far, guys, I'm absolutely bang on. We have won the Premier League for the final time in this takeover. And we did it in dominating fashion. 12 points clear top of the table. But we've once again lost to Everton in a cup final. I've d Liverpool, what are you playing at? And Norwich knocked us out in round three of the FA Cup. Guys, I am not lacking our chances of catching up with AC Milan. But hang on a minute, we've won the Carabao Cup. That's trophy number two, remember. And we've also won the Super Cup. That's trophy number three. We've actually matched AC Milan's record, but we've got one more competition to go through, and that's the Champions League. And guys, we very nearly went to the Europa League second in Group B, but we do go to the knockout. And that's where we annihilate PSG 5-2 on aggregate. And we've annihilated Real Batiste in the quarters 5-3 on aggregate. And we've got past the bottle jobs in the semis. We play New Fate in the final. If we beat them, we surpass AC Milan on that leaderboard. And we've done it, guys. We've won the Champions League. We've beaten New Fate 3-1 in the final. We have surpassed AC Milan on the leaderboard. We have got 23 trophies in total with Liverpool. And this is the team we are ending this takeover with. And I've just realised my modest Philly went up to 99 overall. We've got two 99 rated players in our team. I think we've done a pretty good job of Liverpool, you know. And here are the stats for the end of season 10, guys. Bakayoko, Luis Diaz and Viega really did carry the boatload this year, didn't they? As for the overall stats, I was right. Luis 
Diaz was our top goal scorer, but Dominic Sabosla was our top assister overall, and we finished this takeover with 23 trophies. Now, I don't know about you guys, but this leaderboard looks a little bit full now, so the next takeover is going to be completely reset, but the next takeovers are going to be slightly different from these ones. But that is where this takeover comes to an end. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like on it, smash that subscribe button. We are literally this close to hitting 50,000 subscribers. Also, if you want to watch another takeover, just click right here to watch this one.